Hi children, Teacher Mike here. In this video, I'm going to show you some pictures of some birds that live in our area. And I'm going to tell you, show you some pictures of them and then just tell you a little bit about information about each one. So these are some of the birds that live in this area. And these are some of the more common birds that you might see. So I wanted to show you pictures of them and tell you their names so that you can start identifying them when you are looking out your window or when you're out and about. So check these out. And then also, if any of if you have any questions about these birds, please send me a message. I'd love to answer them. I love birds. I love answering questions about birds. I would love to help out. And so let's get started. So I'm going to make my video a little bit smaller. There we go. So I'm in the small corner now. And we're going to start off with my favorite bird. This is a crow, an American crow. Crows are live on all continents except for Antarctica. It's too cold there. And they, so they live all over the world. They are super smart. Um, they do all kinds of cool stuff. So these two crows are hanging out. This one looks like it has some stuff in its mouth. They're probably going to make a nest. Oh, there's a third crow here. So, oh, this is like a pile of wood chips. They're probably digging through looking for some stuff. Crows are very smart. They can find food nearly anywhere. Um, they commute, so they'll live in in one area and then fly, like they're driving to work, they'll fly somewhere else and then they'll look for food over there and then they'll fly back home at the end of the day. So they're very similar to people in a lot of the ways that they act. Um, they have a great memory. Oh, here we go. So this is the crow right here. It looks like it has something in its mouth. Crows often have things in their beaks because they're so clever and they're thinking of things to do with it. And this is a red-winged blackbird. So this is not a crow. This is smaller. As you can see, it does have red on its wings. This is called a red-winged blackbird. And you will see the, these in our area as well, <clears throat> but they're not as common in crow, as crows. So one thing crows like to do is they'll pick up bright, shiny things, and sometimes they'll bring it to people. So there was this, there's this famous crow that lives in Seattle that would bring little charms to this uh, seven-year-old girl in her backyard, and it would drop off a little charm in her backyard, and then she would give it food. And then the next day, it, brought, it came back with a new little shiny object, and she gave it food again. And this happened for 10 years. The crow would come back every single day and it would bring her a new gift every time and she would give it food every time. So if you're nice to crows, they will be nice to you. They, are, they, all, they have a great memory. They remember everything. I could talk forever about crows, but I need to move on so you can see some more um, animals or more birds. So crows are all black, okay? And um, they're, sometimes they're by themselves. Sometimes they're in a group. And this is another blackbird. This is called a raven, though. Ravens are bigger than crows, and their beak is thicker. So this beak right here is pretty thick. Um, and let me show you also the size difference. So right here is a crow, and right here is a raven. So the raven is much bigger. So if you see a bird that's all black and it's pretty big, it's probably a raven. And there are ravens in our area, but... Um, they're not as common as crows. If you see a blackbird, it's probably a crow. They're very, very common because they're so smart and they're able to adapt and live anywhere. So they are all over the place. Let's keep going. This is an American robin, and these are very common here. So they have this orange breast, and then they have this blackish, grayish, grayish um, wings and back and head. Um, you usually see them in a pair. There'll be two of them. One is a boy and one is a girl, and they hang out all the time. And they're good at perching, so you see their feet. They can hold on to branches. They like to walk on the ground, actually, and they use their beaks to poke around in the grass and sticks and looking for insects and worms to eat. Um, so you, if you see them, it'll probably be on the ground walking uh, with another American robin with it. This one is called a house finch. And um, not all of them have so much red on their breast and their heads, but some of them do. When I see them, they usually don't have this much red. Um, it's, they're a little bit less colorful than that. But this is the male. It's more colorful. And this is the female. There's no red on it. Um, that's common in birds. Males usually have more colors than the females to help attract females um, so that they can hang out and be friends. So that has a pretty big beak for its body. And house finches, they like to make nests in houses or on telephone poles or in buildings. So you'll see them near buildings, usually not in trees. Usually you'll see them near buildings or houses. So that's a house finch. See, it's mostly brown and white and a little bit of black. 
And then this is a house sparrow. These are a little bit bigger than a house finch. And um, they're very distinct. Once you notice one and identify it, you'll see them everywhere. So they have this like black stripe down the front of their throat. And then they have this brown like slick on the side of their head. And then like these white cheeks. When you see these, this brown part and then the white cheeks and the brown, or the black strip down the front, it's a house sparrow every time. They're very, very, very common. They're all over the United States. And no matter where you are, you'll see them. And they're usually around buildings and around sidewalks. And sometimes they'll pick up little crumbs of food that they find. Um, they are all over the place. And in the morning, they like to sing. So if you ever go outside in the morning time, you might hear them chirping and singing. This is a California towhee. So it's a little bit more drab in color. So drab means less um, bright and less flamboyant. So it's more just a gray brown, not very colorful, other than those um, more subdued colors. They're pretty common though. You'll see them on fences and on posts. See this one's on a fence post right here or on wires. So here's one on a wire um, and they live in California. So you might see that one. This is an Anna's hummingbird. Hummingbirds are pretty small. They're probably about that tall, if you're looking at my fingers. So they're not very big. And uh, this is an Anna's hummingbird. It's all gr green. And let me show you a picture of it hum floating. So this is a hummingbird. Their wings can flap really, really, really fast, and they can just hover in one spot. And they're the only bird that can fly backwards. All other birds have to fly forward. Anna's, or hummingbirds, all hummingbirds can fly forwards or backwards because their, their wings flap so quickly they can change direction. It's pretty cool. And they use this long beak and they put it inside of flowers and they drink the nectar and that's where they get their food from. This is a scrub jay. This is a California scrub jay. If you see a bird that has this big like a lot of blue on its back and white on its tummy it's probably a scrub jay they're pretty aggressive as well so they are not very friendly to other birds um, so if they see other birds they try to uh, go fly really close to them and scare them so scrub jays are not very friendly they they're they empty buckets of other birds so Sometimes you'll see crows chasing scrub jays away, saying, get out of here, we don't want you over here, because scrub jays are not very friendly. Um, but you'll see them around. Um, sometimes they're they're hanging out in trees. You can see that it has these, its, um, its feet are able to hold onto this branch right here, so they like to hang out in trees. So that's a California scrub jay. And this is a barn swallow. Barn swallows are super cool. Um, they're kind of smaller, and they're about as big, if, uh, their body if you make a fist with your hand that's about how big their body is for your fist um, and they have this white underbelly and they have black or blue on the top so let me show you a picture this is the top of their body and they're so cool they're very quick and they dart in and out they can change directions really well and they have this very distinct uh, wing pattern where their wings are really wide and kind of thin and then their tail kind of has like two fins on it so if you see that that is a barn swallow and they like to make their nests in barns. So that's why they're called a barn swallow. And here's another picture of it perched. It has this white breast and then a blue or black on the top. This is a black crowned night heron. These are pretty big. If you're standing next to it, it would probably from its bottom of its feet to the top of its head, it would probably go up to your waist. So they're like two feet, two to three feet tall. And I wanted to show you the black crowned night heron because it is the official bird of Oakland, California. A few years ago, there were some students, I think they were third graders, they really thought the night heron was really cool. So they put together a portfolio and a presentation and they went to the mayor of Oakland and they said, we want the black crowned night heron to be the official bird of Oakland. And there's black crowned night herons that live at Lake Merritt. Um, so if you go to Lake Merritt, you'll see them there. Um, and the mayor and the city council voted and they decided that the black crowned night, <laughs> sorry, the black crowned night heron would become the official bird of Oakland. So they're pretty cool. They, they like to be around water because they eat fish out of the water. So this is what it looks like. And, um, yeah, they're pretty cool. And also if you go to Lake Merritt, you'll definitely see this. This is a double crested cormorant. 
has this long black neck. They have a very long body. Let me show you a picture of it flying. So here's a picture of it flying. It has a stick in its mouth. So they have these long necks. They're all black, and they like to live in in flocks. So there'll be several of them. And in, at Lake Mary, they all live on this one island where there's a tree in the middle of the island, and they all perch on this one tree. So if you go to Lake Mary, look for the island, and you'll see lots of these black crown or double-crested cormorants. They are all over, and they like to be around water as well. And they can swim in the water, too. Let me show you a picture of them swimming. See? They can swim in the water, too. Oh, this is a western bluebird. Let me make this picture bigger. Um, you'll see these around. If you see... Oh, this is loading. So this is a western bluebird. Um, we made a life cycle of the western bluebird activity, so you can do that as well. To learn more about them and this they're a little bit smaller they're about the size of a sparrow or a finch so they're about this tall they're usually in pairs of male and a female um, but if you see a bird that's blue and orange then it's probably a western western bluebird if it's blue and white then it's a scrub jay and this you might think that's a duck it's not a duck this is an american coot and you, the way you can tell the difference is its beak a coot's beak is very narrow like this, if you're looking at my hands, and a duck's bill is flat and wide like that. So this is a coot, and their legs look like dinosaur legs. Let me show you. This is what their legs look like. They look like a dinosaur legs to me. They um, they walk around like that, and they, can, they like to swim in the water. There's a lot of coots at Lake Merritt. If you go to Lake Merritt, you'll definitely see coots there. They're all over the place, and people are always like, there's a duck. And I always have to be like, excuse me, what? it's not a duck, it's a coot. It's a different kind of bird. And here are some coot chicks, all oh, that little bald on the top, very cute. Here's here's a picture of more coots over here. They, they like to hang out in groups, so you'll see lots of them at once. You'll see them walking around near the water or, or swimming in the water. American coot. This is a buffalo head duck. And this is a cool one because I like the way its head is kind of round and circular. And it has this like shiny green and a little bit purple. Oops, it's loading now. Let's give this a second to load. So these are ducks who like to swim in the water. And um, so they eat seaweed from the water. Here we go. So they have this big white part on the back of their head and then their bottom of their body is white. And they have this like shimmery, shiny green and purple. Sometimes it'll look black, but when the sun reflects off it, it looks this iridescent green and purple. They're really cool. And here's a picture of it flying. And you can see its feet are webbed, and that helps it swim when it's, it uses its feet to propel its body when it swims. And this is a turkey vulture. There's lots of turkey vultures in the Oakland Hills. They just have their wings outspread just like this, and they just soar around. And they're just looking for dead animals because turkey vultures are scavengers. So what they do is they just soar around and they just fly around in these big circles. And their eyesight is really good. That's its eye right there. And it just is waiting to find some animals that it can, that are already dead and they can go eat it. Um, they're all over the place. You'll see, you'll see them if you look. Their wings are really, really big. So if you put your arms out wide, that's probably as wide as their wings are. Their wings are pretty big. And if you look, they have the front of their wings are black, and then the back under part is white. Okay, and then the next one, this is a California condor. These are famous birds. They're world famous. They almost went extinct. So that means almost all of them died, and there are almost no more left. But some ornithologists, an ornithologist is a bird scientist, decided we want to save the condors. We don't want them to all die. So they started um, helping the condors come back and making safe places for them to live and helping them breed and helping them increase in number and population. So now they're not ex near extinct anymore. There's still not very many of them. They're still protected, but they're, they have very long wingspan as well. They're, they're vulture, just like a, a turkey vulture. So they just, they fly around looking for dead animals to eat. So sometimes people see a turkey vulture and they'll say, oh, there's a condor, because condors are famous, but it's not. They look different. So condors, I mean, uh, this bird, the turkey vulture, is not as big, and the black is in the front, and then there's a big white part on the back, whereas a turkey, I mean, whereas a California condor just has this white, like, band right here, and the rest of their wings are black. So if it's really, really big, and the back of the wings is black, 
America or condor. If it's a little bit smaller, the bag of the wings is white, turkey vulture. It's probably a turkey vulture. They're much more common. I have seen two condors in my whole life. Um, and I've seen hundreds of turkey vultures. You'll probably see turkey vultures, turkey vultures more often. Next up, this is a California quail. And I wanted to show you this bird because it's the official state bird of California. So um, it's a symbol of one of the symbols of California. And it has this really cool plume. You see this feather right here on top of its head? That is called a plume. And it sticks out the top of its head. And it's just for decoration to look cool. Um, and um, quails do not like to fly very much. So they're usually walking around. If you see them, it'll, you'll probably see them walking. And if you um, see them in the springtime, look at that plume coming out. So cool. Um, you might see it with a line of baby quails following it because they, they like to go on walks. And then a line of baby quails will be walking behind it. So they're pretty cool to see. Well, that's the end of my video. You can look for all of these birds um, when, whenever you want. Look out your window, see what you see. And if you do see a bird and you're wondering what it is and you can't figure it out, send me a message and I will try to help you because birds are cool and I want you to be able to identify them. I love identifying birds. It is fun. So I hope you have a good day. Bye-bye.